episode 137, Leanda Michelle. Good morrow, and welcome back to The Realm. I'm epic fantasy author J.B. Hilliard, your friendly neighborhood scribe, and today I'm featuring The Realm's first memoirist. So if you've ever wondered what it's like not just to write your first book, but also write one about your life and times, then stick around to watch my interview with our guest, Leanda Michelle, all the way from Australia. Leanda, well met and welcome to The Realm. Thank you so much for having me. It is my pleasure. Let's dive right in. You are the first memoirist I've had uh, on the realm so far. As someone who writes just straight up fiction, I'm oftentimes baking into my characters parts of me and parts of people around me. But you do something different. You're, you're writing about yourself. You know how honest are you about yourself when you, when you when you write that stuff? And or you know have have you found that you know to make the story better? Uh, that you've had to kind of tweak certain things just to make it work, or, or do you find that the truth always will out? Oh, the truth always outs. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, one of the most frequent uh, comments, you know, with reviews and testimonials of, of from people who've read my books, they, they, they're they quite astounded at how honest and truthful um, that they perceive that I've been. It, it's really important to me, actually, to be as honest as I can. Well, have you found it hard to kind of protect relationships you have with that level of honesty? I mean, b by way of example, do you get any pushback from friends and family to make sure that the, they feel that they're represented accurately or at least fairly? Or has there ever been a situation where you might have, you know, damaged or endangered a relationship because people didn't want to be part of it? Yeah, look, absolutely. Um, the very first book that I put out, Right to Heal, like it has two meanings. It is your right to heal and you can write to heal. There were friends in there that I named and I learned very quickly that it was probably best to just change the names of everybody it, right across the board because we all have a different uh, perspective and experience of a life and it's how we perceive it. Um, for me, writing is a very cathartic experience and there is um, a, a release in the written word and how that um, sort of dissipates, you know, some of uh, the, the, the trauma or the experience that we've, we've been through. Well, I'm glad you said something a little earlier. You said writing is healing and there is a catharsis. Have you found it to be so for you? Yeah, absolutely. It, for me, when you're feeling in that really um, difficult place of, you know, whatever's coming up just to sit with a pen and a you know and a notepad it's like there is no other third person or third party involved it's just you and your connection with source or whatever you believe in nature even i think that that's really important and i think that plays into my next set of questions i mean you're um a natural healer and someone that believes in in that how did you find yourself in that space, or was that something that you grew up, um, you know, in in that space for the for natural healing, or did you find your way there during your uh, natural course of, of living your life? Yeah, no, I never found it in my early childhood. My early childhood was very, you know, keep the peace, don't rock the boat, um, and so it wasn't until I married and went to live on a farm, and of course, traditional farming families vastly different than coming from the city and then from there it really the healing aspect it was more of a curiosity it was like there was more to life than what I was physically seeing outside of me and so the writing and the healing were very very closely connected um, I embarked on Reiki learning about energy really and then I found sound Reiki. And so it was all about the voice and having that uh, ability to not only use the voice through written expression, but also through sound and, and healing that way as well. So the two just wove beautifully together with music. There's music all around us all the time. It's a matter of whether we're really listening. You know, that's a really well said. I, I, I've never heard it explained that way before. So I appreciate that. And I know our, our uh, viewers are also going to appreciate that. But I have to ask this question. When I was doing my, my research on you, the thing that jumped out at me is on your website, you have dream consulting uh, as something that you do. Was that by accident or was that uh, purposeful? And where did that start? Uh, the dreams, 
I love dreams and and delving into the you know into the different aspect of the mind. Basically, it's like every day you can wake up, and if you just sort of stay in that state between sleep and awake, you can pick up on different nuances. There, there's so much involved in dreams. There really is. Leanda, obviously you're an author by trade and you've written a number of pieces of work. Which of your books are your favorite book and why? It's In Light of the Truth. In Light of the Truth was the second book that I wrote and the subtitle is Now is the Time to Remember. Every chapter is based on um, a note. So it starts with C, D, E, F as you go along with each chapter and it's it's a fun, playful, but at the same time, the total opposite as well. So it's that polarization of life and our relationships. On the cover is my dad holding me as a baby. In oh. the and people don't see it generally unless I point it out to them. Yeah. Well, now that you did, I definitely do. And that's a stroke of artistic genius. I really like that. Thank you. Well, Leanda, we're coming to that time in our show where I ask all of our guests to go through our lightning round. So if you're ready, I've got a few fun questions I'm going to throw at you and see what kind of answers come from it. Okay. Great. So first question, I'm going to start up a little bit of a softball. Uh, and because we were talking about dream consulting before, I want to know your dream team. Tell me if your four favorite authors that would make up your dream team and you would put them in a car together and you'd ride off into the sunset and write books for the rest of your lives. Who would they be? Oh my goodness. I'm not good with remembering names and <laughs> things like that. All right, maybe it's 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 a it's a dual bike thing. You're pedaling and your favorite author's on the back seat. <gasps> JK Rowling. So, uh, you know, I didn't expect you to say JK Rowling's someone that writes memoirs and stuff about natural health. How, why would she be yours? I have a resonance with her that she's never given up and she has a beautiful creative expression about her she's really delved into the depths of the human psyche from my personal opinion interesting so this this was a much deeper answer than i thought i was going to get i was going to say you loved harry potter <laughs> second one the best piece of advice you you can give to an aspiring author and only because we have a lot of authors uh that uh that listen to the show not just readers um and but you know authors as well as someone who is an accomplished author uh, with a number of pieces of work, what would be your best piece of advice for them? Keep following your heart and showing up to express yourself and never give up. Well, there was three pieces of advice there. Well done. I'm going to take the opposite end of that. Opposite end's coming now too. What's the one mistake that you regret making as an author? Like, what's that one thing you're like, oh, I should have done that or I shouldn't have done that? From an author's perspective, uh, tell our, our viewers here uh, what, what you regret the most. I guess sometimes not listening, not listening to my inner, my inner voice. That's the first time anybody said that. And I think that's the, one of the best pieces of advice we've got on the show. So I, you took a worst and made it a best. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Leanna, thank you very much for coming onto the realm. Before I let you go, tell everybody a, a little bit about where they can find your books and your next work in progress. Yes, where they can find my books is at cdreampress.com.au. And my next project is called The Harmony Point. And it's all about finding that balance in life, or it perceives to be that way, but it may not be. There's a surprise at the end. <laughs> Well, great. Well, Leanda, thank you very much for coming on The Realm and I look forward to, to reading the next one as it comes out. Please keep me informed and, and let us know so I can let my followers know. Thank you so much, Joe. It's been really and very enjoyable. Much appreciated. Well, I hope you enjoyed our time with Leanda Michelle all the way from Australia. Go check out one of her four books. I know she's working on her fifth. And speaking of fourth books, uh, my book, Echoes of Ghostwood, comes out in June of 2024. It'll finish up the Warminster saga and get you ready for some standalone origin stories from that. Really do appreciate everybody's support. And again, uh, to all of my listeners, thank you for lending me your ear today. And until next time, I'm J.V. Hilliard, and may your gods go with you.